Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Web Gear Review. First of all, I would like to say thank you to all of you out there who have uh, subscribed to the channel. And I'd like to say thank you also to all of you who do watch the videos. And to you who are watching the videos that have not subscribed, I would ask you to subscribe if you would. That would help me grow and to build this channel so I can bring you more content in the long run. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the video. This is an M1936 field bag. In fact, the nomenclature to this here is bag, canvas, field, uh, M1936. Now, the stock number of this here bag would be 74B-53. Now, this M1936 fill bag that you're looking at right here was designed after the first model, which was the M1921 model. Now, you can look that up. And uh, so anyway, let's get on into the video here. Uh, this bag, this particular one, weighs about 1 pound and 14 uh, point 14, which would be one pound and uh, an eighth. So it's pretty lightweight. So uh, this bag here, if you look at it, it has about a five by five inch pocket right here on this side that closes with uh, this uh, type of button right here. Okay. Now, if you look on the back here, it has another pocket right here, which is about a 10 by 12 pocket that would go up against your back there and it also closes with this cap button type of button the same type of button that it has on the little pocket here now these straps that you see hanging off here they uh have the uh uh the metal clips on it here right here the hardware appears to be brass but let me see here no it is metal it sticks to it Okay, it's not up here. These are probably uh, some kind of brass or alloy, but that there is uh, steel. So anyhow, these are the way that it would attach to the suspenders. Okay, now let's turn this thing around. This bag is about five inches wide or five and a half inches wide down here and about two inches wide at the top. So it's kind of a, a tear drape shot up. Uh, a teardrop shaped bag, excuse me. But anyway, as you go on and you look at this bag, it's stamped US up here on the top and it's stamped Bodine. And that's a Lieutenant Bodine, okay? And the reason I know that is cause you look right here, a lot of times they would carry this strap that comes with these Musette bags right here in that little pocket when they wasn't using it. This strap right here can also be clipped on right here and right here. And now it could be carried as a shoulder type of bag. Okay. So it could be carried two ways. It could be used with in conjunction with the M1936 type suspenders, or it could be used as a carrying bag. Now, to show you how I know this is a uh, belong to a Lieutenant Bodine, let me see if I can get this in the camera. On the strap right here, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. It says Lieutenant Bodine. Now, let's take a look at this, this pack right here. This pack is basically 11 by 12 wide and then five and a half deep about two inches up here at the top. Now, this M1936 field bag is known to most people as the Musette bag. Most every time you hear somebody talk about an M1936, they say the Musette bag, okay? Well, the Musette bag, uh, that was a French military term, which means haversack. And so... The Musette bag, uh, they kind of started getting called that leftovers from World War I, I would imagine. So, uh, but that's what, uh, that's what uh, a Musette bag is. It's a French military term that uh, 
for the haversack. But anyway, this particular type bag that you see right here, the M1936 Musette bag, was uh, issued to officers, paratroopers, uh, instead of issuing the M1928 haversack to these troops, this was issued. Paratroopers wore these. Uh, armored infantry wore these. Uh, officers wore these. And also, uh, the way I understand it, a whole lot of the uh, uh, motorized troops had these type of bags right here instead of the M1928 haversack. Because according to use the M1928 haversack, like uh, it was intended, you got to have somewhere flat to lay it out to roll up and fold all that, that and garb up. But this bag here, it's simply a bag. You can open it up. You can get into there. And then uh, you can get your goodies out. But I want to show you something with this bag here. I believe it was in 19... Uh, in late 1942... The Army decided to switch from Olive Drab number three to the darker shade of Olive Drab number seven. And I believe that might be uh, 43. But anyway, uh, so of webbing. So this here is actually a transitional piece. If you see here, we have the lighter shade of the OD number three. And we have the, uh, like, this trim is kind of in the old khaki number nine. And then these straps here are in the OD uh, number seven. So the army allowed these manufacturers to use up the existing parts they had. So no doubt they still had some of this trim, still had some of this main color of the bag. And then uh, they were probably getting in new, new uh, OD number seven color. And of course the strap here looks kind of like the old khaki color. Uh, so anyway, that's one interesting thing about this particular bag right here. It is a transitional piece right here. Now, uh, like I said, this pack attached to the uh, M1936 suspenders by the means of these here. We go over the shoulders and hook in. If you look at the one where I had it on the mannequin, uh, you can kind of see how it attaches up. I'll do a detail, lay down on the table and show also these two little uh, D rings there was also for that. Let's look inside of this thing. Now, like I said, I just stuffed this thing full of some uh, bubble wrap here to make her look all puffed up there so you can kind of see what's going on. But let's take a look inside of this thing. This thing is just basically a big compartment in there. You see that? It has this divider running down the middle, which divides the front half and the back half. And then it has just like, kind of like the M1944 and 45 pack, it has that type of little divider there. Let's see if you can see that. See how the inside of this pack looks? So you can put stuff here, you can slide things here, maybe a few personal items here and there. Now, one thing about this bag is, is you see this loop right here? Right here is a loop right here. This little canvas loop that you see right there. Okay, there's quite, uh, there don't really seem to be too much information on what this loop was for right here. So basically, uh, let me get, I got a few notes here. This little loop here, uh, I don't know what it was for. And there are some ideals that people think that what it was for. Some say it was for a, a three sectional uh, tent pole uh, would slide in there, but when you get it, try to slide it in there, it won't fit. Now, some people say it was for uh, a couple other things, but the things really don't, uh, it don't pan out. It don't seem to work. But anyway, now here's a, here's a list of the contents according to the manual that's supposed to be in this bag. Okay. It's uh, a flashlight, a handkerchief, a mess kit, complete, 
a raincoat, rations, toilet uh, set, and a towel. Now, all of, and then of course the steel helmet. That's one thing that some people said that maybe the steel helmet come through here under the cover. The you know the chin strap wouldn't, and the helmet would hang out here. But however, uh, there's really nothing to back that up other than just a, a thought. But anyway, all of those list of items that went in here, ain't nothing that would fit in there. So if anybody out there in the YouTube lands got some documentation on what this is actually for, um, leave it in the comment section because I'd kind of like to know. And to be honest, there's a whole lot of other collectors that's uh, supposed to be far and above me and smarter and everything than I am uh, supposed to be. So anyhow... They'd like to know too. So if you happen to know about that, why don't you holler at us? Okay. Now, another thing about this, this uh, M1936 uh, field bag, let me mention one other thing. Whatever it is this loop was used for, it was on the original M1921. So it had to have a purpose or it wouldn't be there. So, uh, and whatever the purpose was, was used in 1921 and also used up into uh, World War II. So anyway, that's just one kind of mystery about the Musette bag. Now, if you'll notice that this bag here is dated. Oh, another way I forgot that you can also see that Lieutenant Bodine stamped on the front in small stencil letters. Okay, but anyway, uh, another thing is, is that you'll notice that I believe that it was in 1944, they started putting a M1910 hanger right here to hang a shovel or something on. Uh, most of the bags that you find with the hanger on it, the M1910 type hanger, will be made out of the OD number no. 7 color because they were made in starting in late 44, I think, and actually issued in 45. Now, there's some controversy among the collecting world whether there were any of them used in uh, World War II that had the uh, the hanger on it because, you know, people claim, well, I've never seen a picture, you know, uh, with one, a wartime picture with this type of bag with the M1910 hanger on it. Now... All I can say is that there must be millions and millions of pictures of World War II. There must be millions and millions of fit, footing of film. And I'm not sure if any one man has seen every inch of film of everything out there. So I don't know how they can say. I mean, all I can do is I can look through all of my books that I have on World War II and the pictures it shows and say, well, I didn't see one in there. But does that mean that wasn't used? I don't think so. I think that's pushing things a little far because I don't know if anybody's seen every single picture, wartime picture. I just I just don't believe that ideal. Now, I know it's nice to have a, uh, a pictorial history of items used, and uh, but just because you don't have one in your collection or in the books you've seen doesn't mean there is not a picture out there somewhere in this whole world that somebody has one of these on with the M19 Tanger. That's just how I I think. Uh, but I understand what they're saying. Uh, you know, so a lot of people say that bag would be a post-war. But I don't know. I know they were beginning to issue it in 45. The war was still going in 45. Possibility there could have been something. But anyway, sorry to get on a rant there. But anyway, one other thing about the Musette bag that I want to mention is is that there was also a Marine Corps version of the Musette bag. Now, I don't have one, but actually they had two different types, uh, two different versions of the Marine Corps bag. Uh, it was basically this, a copy of the Army 1936 bag with modified carrying straps. These straps were lengthened further where they could go down around and hook into here and then they slid uh, a padding up on here, kind of a shoulder pad for your shoulder pads. And uh, if you go back and look at my uh, packboard video, I think I actually have a video on shoulder pads. 
But anyway, the Marine Corps has had a longer strap and they'd slide a shoulder pad on her and go around. And these were the backpack straps. Basically, they didn't hook to the uh, M1936 type spenders. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching the Web Gear Review. I hope that you uh, liked uh, this kind of content. And if you'll continue to watch, I'll continue to make. And that's why it's important to hit the like button and share on your favorite media. And for y'all that have not subscribed, subscribe because the more people subscribing uh, shows me that, hey, there's people that want to see these collection and these old web gear items. And it makes me want to show more. So thanks for watching the web gear review.